Welcome to this video. In this tutorial, we are gonna review how to source products and materials from multiple vendors using the planning optimization. This functionality has been available since version 10.0.31 and it's managed by the Feature Management Workspace. One of the crucial strategic decisions in the procurement management is the sourcing methodology of the products either by single source or multi-sourcing. In other words, would you purchase the products from preferred one vendor or multiple vendors? While some organizations are relying on only one supplier in order to maintain a simple supplier network, a growing number of businesses during the pandemic are making a strategic shift from single sourcing to multi-sourcing. Working with a simple supplier network for sure will be translated into better terms or maybe better pricing, but this is not enough for a resilient supply chain. The reason why the multi-sourcing matters is the ability to reduce the risk and building a resilient supply chain. As it's known, don't put all the eggs in one basket. The multi-source strategy can reduce the risk of the supply shocks that could impact the operations. Also, diversification of the supply network can help the business to be agile and respond to any changes. With the multi-sourcing strategy, we are less dependent on any individual supplier. Using the multi-sourcing feature, you can divide the supply of a specific product among different vendors by assigning a supply percentage to each of them. After that, the application can automatically suggest a vendor for the generated planned orders accordingly to that policy. Now let's review how to define a multi-source policy. Assuming that the multi-sourcing feature is enabled, I'll navigate to the procurement and sourcing module, setup, policies, then multi-source policies. I'm going to define a new policy for 70-30% among two different vendors. I'll click new, then I'll give it a name like 70-30, the same for the description. Then here in the policy rules tab, I'm going to select the vendors. I'll click add and the first vendor is 1001 and the target allocation is 70%. Then the second vendor is 1002 and the target allocation is 30%. Then I'll click save. Here in the general tab, I'll keep the balance period in days to the default value, 180. The balance period in days will be used to calculate the actual allocation for every vendor. Then I'll set this option to yes to indicate that this policy is active. Then I'll navigate to the policy assignments form to select the applicable items. I'll click new, then I'll select my item. This is valid for warehouse 11, and this will be valid for the entire year from 1-1-2023 to end of December. Then I'll click save. Looking into the inventory transactions of this item, we can see that this item has been purchased twice. The first time from 1001 vendor and the quantity was 350 and the second time from 1002 vendor and the quantity was 200. When I go back to the policy assignment to check the current allocation, here we can see the current allocation of every vendor the target allocation and the allocation deviation. Now let's review how the current allocation values have been calculated. So first, here we have the total quantity per vendor. This is the quantity that has been purchased from the vendor during the past period in days that we have specified in the policy, which is 180 days. Then we have the current allocation per vendor and the current allocation per vendor is calculated using this equation. The vendor total quantity divided by the accumulated 
total quantity for all vendors. So in order to calculate the current allocation for vendor 1001, it will be 350 divided by the total accumulated quantity, which is 550 multiplied by 100. So the current allocation will be 63.64. Then we have a target allocation per vendor that is specified in the policy. Then we have a deviation between the target allocation and the current allocation. The deviation percentage per vendor is calculated using this equation. The absolute value for the vendor's actual allocation or the current allocation minus the vendor's target allocation divided by the vendor target allocation multiplied by 100. So in order to calculate the deviation percentage for vendor 1001, it will be the current allocation 63.64 minus the target allocation 70% divided by the target allocation 70% multiplied by 100. So the allocation deviation for vendor 1001 equal 9.09%. Now let's move to the interesting part and let's review how the vendor is selected. When the plan runs, there are some rules and assumptions that are applied in order to select the best vendor. And the first assumption that the order quantity will not be split or in other words, it's only one vendor that will be selected. The second assumption that the plan will select the active policy for the applicable items, considering the one with the most specific inventory dimensions. So if we have two policy, one specified on site level and the second one specified on site and warehouse level, then the one with site and warehouse will be selected. While running the planning optimization, the multi-source algorithm will perform some simulations like if I select vendor 1001, what is the average deviation of the two vendors? Then it will perform the same simulation for vendor 1002 and calculate the average deviation for the two vendors. Then the one with the lowest average deviation will be selected. Let's review an example. So this is the current allocation. Imagine that we have an incoming demand of a sales order of 200 each. When the plan runs, the plan will make some simulations and the first simulation, if we select vendor 1001. If we select 1001, then the total quantity for this vendor will be 350 plus 200. So total quantity will be 550. The total quantity for vendor 1001 will remain the same. Then the system will calculate the current allocation and the deviation as per the mentioned equation. And then the system will calculate average deviation for the two vendors. After that, in the second simulation, the system will select vendor 1002. So the total quantity for 1001 will remain the same and the total quantity for 1002 will be 200 plus 200 so it will be 400 then the system will calculate current allocation deviation average deviation then the system will select the simulation that cause the lowest average deviation indeed we can see here the lowest average deviation uh, is 7.94 when we select vendor 1001 then 1001 will be selected let's move to the application and review the scenario so i just created the sales order line of 200 each and the plan has been performed now let's move to the planned orders form and here we can see a planned purchase order has been generated and here in the vendor we can see that 1001 vendor is selected as expected.
let's firm this order then i'll move to the current allocation form in order to review the current or actual allocation after firming that order here we can see the current allocation for vendor 1001 is 73.33 and the current allocation for vendor 1001 is 26.67 one more interesting feature was the multi-sourcing functionality that we could define a minimum order quantity on vendor level. And the question, what if we already defined a minimum order quantity on the default order setting on the released product form? Still, the default order setting is respected, but the higher is applied. In order to define a minimum order quantity per vendor, I'll navigate to the multi-source policy, then order quantity per vendor. New, then I'll select the vendor, like for example, 1002, the item number, P150103, then the minimum quantity, let's say 100, then save. Now let's review how the simulation works considering the minimum order quantity. So this is the current and actual allocation. Imagine that we have an incoming quantity of 50 each. So right now we have two vendors, vendor 1001 without minimum order quantity. So somehow the expected planned purchase order will be 500 each. But if we select vendor 1002, then the expected planned purchase order quantity will be uh, 50 plus the minimum order quantity. So it will be 100. And accordingly, the simulation works. So that when the system performed the simulation, so uh, when we performed the simulation with 1001, then the incoming quantity would be 50, then the system will calculate the average deviation. Then when it comes to calculate the quantity with vendor 1001, it will be calculated considering the incoming quantity as if 100 each. When it comes right now to compare the average deviation indeed we could see the deviation using 1001 is the lowest and the system will select vendor 1001 so for this scenario i created a sales order line with 50 each here we have the minimum order quantity 100 each for vendor 1001 then the plan has been generated Let's review right now the generated planned purchase order. And here we can see that the order quantity is 50 and vendor 1001 is selected. Let's play more and imagine that the minimum order quantity for vendor 1002 is 80 instead of 100. So the process is the same. The system will simulate with 1001 as the quantity is uh, 500 since we don't have minimum order quantity for this vendor then when it comes to perform the calculation or the simulation for 1002 then the quantity would be 80 here uh, when we look to the average deviation we can see that average with vendor 1002 is the lowest then in this scenario 1002 is selected in this scenario, I'll not change the order line quantity. I'll keep it 500. Then here, I just change it the minimum order quantity for 1002 to 80 each. Then I perform it the plan. And here in the plan purchase order, we can see an order has been generated with quantity 80. And here we can see that vendor 1002 is selected.